Hello again and welcome once more to this, the third video in our series of educational tutorials for the knowledge of London. My name is Dean Warrington and what we're going to do today is show you exactly how to find and learn points as a beginner once you've completed your Blue Book runs. This video starts where the previous video, the definitive guide to learning Blue Book left off. But before we start, let's recap on where you should be right now. If all of your Blue Book runs are finished, you should now be calling 80 runs each day in around one hour or less. Break that into two 30 minute slots. The 30 minute slots is a very important aspect and more important than most people realize. Always study for set amounts of time. And if you are studying on your own, always have a break after 30 minutes. If you're studying in a pair, then have a break after one hour. Now, if you're calling 30 runs in 30 minutes, you are at the lower end of the scale, but it's just acceptable but you must not be calling lower than that. If you are, then that's something you need to work on immediately to raise your standard. The way to raise the standard is to work in blocks of 10 to 16 runs. Take the first 10 runs and call them. Time yourself and write the amount you called down. If you are slower than 10 runs in 10 minutes, then call the same set again and time yourself again and try to beat your previous time. Once you succeed, then make sure you call that group of 10 to 16 runs every day in 10 minutes, but now start working on the next group to bring that up to standard. Keep going like this until you have all the sets up to a reasonable to good standard. So in a nutshell, 60 runs an hour is the lowest standard you want to be at. 80 runs an hour is steady and reasonable. 80 runs in 30 minutes is excellent. There's one major advantage to calling quickly and that is that it frees up time for you to study and focus on other things. You do not need to call more than 80 runs a day. As a beginner to pointing, the biggest problem that occurs is organization. How do you organize all these points? How do you choose which ones to visit? And most importantly, how do you revise them? This is where WizRadius app and large radius map books come into their own. They take care of all of the organization and allow you to just focus on the important factor of finding and remembering as many points as possible. When you buy the large radius map books in paper form, we provide the equivalent WizRadius app book for free. Once you have these, you are ready to go and start pointing. The large radius map books will show you the radius maps in geographical order and correspond and match the geographical order in the WizRadius app. You can use the WizRadius app as a standalone method or in conjunction with the paper version. Personally, I would use the app version on my tablet without the paper version. You can use a strong Velcro to fix the tablet to your knowledge board and you're ready to go. I understand that some people are uneasy doing that. So in that case, you will need the paper version. And you can use the paper version on your board and keep your tablet with you for constant revision, which will be necessary. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to show you the method of using the WizRadius app in conjunction with large radius paper versions. All the advice in this video remains the same if you choose, as I would, to use the WizRadius app without the paper version. Open your WizRadius app and select geographical maps. The Blue Book Maps section is for students that wish to do the points whilst doing the runs. Select that if you're doing that method but we're not going to cover that as I don't recommend you do points whilst you're doing your runs at all. Once you've selected the geographical maps, you will see the very first map, Surrey Street. There are eight points on this map. That's not all the points in this quarter mile radius, but as you will see in the next few maps, you are going to be in this area for at least a day, picking up a lot more points. But start with one map at a time. Now from these eight points, which ones should you find? If you look to the right, the point listing, you will see a number. This is the number of times this point has been asked. All of the points on this list have been asked more than 20 times, but that's not the whole story. What you also want to know is, is that point being asked recently or in the past year? So for this, we need to return briefly to the home screen. Here, we need to set the filters to eliminate the points that we feel do not have a great value at the present time. To do that, we need to make the times asked filter set to between 20, 25, or 50 times asked or more. Now this part is up to you to decide. For me personally, I would choose 20 times asked and think about raising to 25 or 50 at a later date, based on the speed of my progress. 
If I'm getting along fine, then it will remain at 20 times asked or more. The next filter is last asked. And for this, I would set it to everything asked in the last 12 months. I most certainly would never select ever. And I would only use six month option when revising. As for the point level option, it must remain set to all. The options here are only for revision purposes, not pointing. Once you've set the filters, you're ready to go with the app. So you now need to mark up your paper version to make them match. With your app showing map one, with the filter set to 20 times asked in the last year, you will see four letters marking five points. There are two points under letter C, which is the London Hotel and the Radio Rooftop Bar. You need to highlight these points on your paper version. If you're using the app, you can skip this bit and go straight out with the iPad on your board. Find point A on the paper version and highlight it. Also, highlight the point name in the list below. And now do the same with points D, C and E. Once you've done this, your final job is to decide the order to visit them in. You do not visit them in alphabetical order, as I've found some students trying to do in the past, but rather point them in geographical order. Because I will be coming from the east, my first point to visit will be point A, coincidentally. If I were coming from the west, then my first point would be point C. After A, I will go to D, then C, and finish with E. You will notice that you may be driving past other points listed on your radius maps that are not marked to be visited. In these instances, it's okay to look and make a small mental recognition, but don't make any real effort to remember them, other than to allow your subconscious to absorb whatever it does naturally. If you try to learn and remember them, you will reduce the volume of points you are intended on pointing that were asked more recently and with a higher frequency. Never forget, you have a maximum capacity for a certain volume of points each day, and that should be filled with important things first, without creating any extra journey time. The biggest question for you to assess at this stage is how many points per day should you point? The answer is very dependent on your ability, determination, and amount of available free time. Students very often overlook the allowance of revision time on top of your bike work time. 30 to 50 points a day is a similar volume of information to four Blue Book runs. If you point 30 to 50 points in your allocated bike time, remember to allow for an hour revision of those points. If you are efficient, you may not need the whole hour to achieve your desired standard, but revision and how you revise is the fundamental secret to remembering large amounts of points quickly. You must revise when you're out on the road, and I will show you how in the next section of this video. In the first four maps, once you have filtered out the ones with a low possibility of being asked, there will be 48 points to find. It doesn't matter if you do not complete all 48, as they will be in sequence that can be stopped and started again any time. The early maps are around the West End and City, which is by far the most popular place for points to be asked in. As you get to the outer maps, it becomes less dense and you may find yourself doing 30 maps in a day with only 30 points spread between them. So do as many points in a day as you can manage, but follow the revision technique to allow maximum absorption. Once you've prepared your large radius paper maps, up to around 30 to 50 points worth, and you've prepared your app, you're now ready to go out pointing. Once you're out on your bike, heading for your first point, remember to drive slowly and take care. If you miss the point, don't react quickly. Just drive past and figure out a way back. This will enhance your memories that you're trying to develop, and these memories are by far the most important aspect of your day. On this particular point, missing it means you will need to come back around Temple Place. And what is learnt here is that you are now creating a memory of turning right out of Temple Place into Victoria Embankment and you will get perfect access to HQS Wellington. It's always a good idea to take a moment to look and think about the point. If you need to, then a small piece of research and investigation will enhance your memory. In this instance, maybe you should wonder why is it called HQS? HQS stands for Headquarters Ship. Knowing that will make remembering this point easier. 
Now open your app and mark the point as visited by tapping its corresponding letter. That's it now, get back on your bike and head to your next point on your list. When you arrive, follow a similar procedure each time. The more advanced you become, the quicker this aspect becomes. Roman Bath is a very interesting point. When the gates are open, you'll go through the very Victorian looking alley, turn right at the end and turn on a light switch on the wall to illuminate an old Roman bath ruin. If you take the time to do this, you'll never forget this point. Once again, mark the point on the app. This is really important because this is what is creating your revision list. Once you've done that, start making your way to the next point. When you arrive at Me London Hotel, you will immediately notice that it's on the corner of the Strand and Aldwych. This raises a very good question. Can I set this down if I was approaching from the Strand eastbound? So I test this by driving around to see if it's possible and the answer is yes. You can set it down when you're coming from the Strand eastbound. Now when you mark the point as visited on your app, you can also add the only note that will be necessary. I will fully cover note taking in the next chapter of this video. To enter a note, tap the letter on the map, not the one in the list. Type your note in and it will forever be linked under that point. What we also discover is that the radio rooftop bar entrance is further along the Aldwych. So far that it is possible to access it if we were coming left out of Catherine Street into the Aldwych. When we tried to mark this point, we noticed that the app and paper map do not accurately reflect its location and it needed editing. Make a note on the paper map and inform Wizan and it will immediately be updated as it was in this instance. In the images on the screen now, you can see before the edit and after the edit. And we really rely on your feedback in this regard. Because Radio Rooftop Bar can be accessed from Catherine Street if you turn left onto the Aldwych and set down on right, it may be worthwhile also adding a quick note to this point. The last point for this map, and coincidentally the fifth point of the day, is the Looney Restaurant. Once you have taken a look at this, you again mark your app, but now you must revise. Always, after pointing four to five points, revise. The revision is threefold. First, revise using verbal answers on the app and press don't know, sticky, or correct for each. The only restaurant, Aldwych and Drury Lane. Roman Bath is Surrey Street, Strand Lane. Radio Rooftop Bar is on the Aldwych Me Hotel. H Press Wellington is Victoria Embankment. A London Hotel is Aldwych Strand. Once that's done, revise again using the map revision feature. This requires you to tap the points location on the map itself. If you tap the map in exactly the right place, then only one option will appear, the correct button. If you tap the map and you are close but not exact, then three options will appear, don't know, sticky and correct. If you tap the map and you are nowhere near, then only two options will appear, don't know and sticky. Now revise one more time without the map. Radio rooftop bar is Aldwych Me Hotel. The Lawney restaurant is Drury Lane and Aldwych. Roman Bath is Surrey Street Strand Lane. Me London Hotel is Aldwych Strand. H Quest Wellington is Victoria Embankment. Three times as a rule should be enough, but if you want to do more, then by all means do more. What you're trying to achieve is to have the road name location on the tip of your tongue. When you point another five points, revise the 10 you've done. You can do this by pressing the today button on your app. Every time you do five points, stop and revise all the points you have done that day by using the today button. This part is seriously important. You will enhance and develop good memories and because it's fresh, you will visualize yourself arriving at most of these points quite comfortably. If for any reason you find a particular point hard to remember, then leave it. Do not worry about it. It is one out of thousands 
keep your focus and concentrate on the building a large repertoire of points. Now that your first day out on the bike pointing is complete, you need to return home to revise. Not only should the revision take place whilst you're out on the road, it needs to be repeated when you get home. By once again using the Today button, revise all the points from your day out. The ideal way to do this is with a partner asking you the points whilst you're left free to concentrate on the answers. If you don't have a partner, then it still must be done regardless, so do it on your own. The app makes this possible. I would time myself to see how long it takes me to complete one complete cycle of the day's revision. You're trying to reach a standard whereby very little thought is required to give the points location. Quick fire, question and answers. You must work on the creation of a thought reflex, whereby hearing the name of the point triggers your memory for the answer. This is massively important as it will allow you to still function when under duress, such as in exam situations. If this requires that you repeat the exercise several times, then so be it. Repetition is what's going to make these points stick and create that reflex. If you find yourself really struggling with one point in particular, mark it as sticky. This will now be added to your sticky list and ready for extra revision. You can access the sticky list from the home screen. Sticky lists should be revised daily. You should be able to be given the point's name and say the location answer all in under two to three seconds. This should mean you're able to revise 50 points in around three to four minutes. The lowest acceptable standard is 50 points in 10 minutes, but please understand that this is extremely low. If you're unable to say the answer, then your partner should quickly tell you the answer. If you don't have a partner, then quickly look at the answer. Don't do clues, first letter, or it rhymes with something. Just get on with it and be told the answer. This allows for more efficient revision and removes the time-wasting aspects that people sometimes add. Never forget this is revision and not a test. On the next cycle around of that revision, you will hopefully be able to say the answer without being told or looking. Cycle around this block of revision until you reach your desired standard. Here is the daily revision technique. Radio and Rooftop Bar, Aldwych Me Hotel. Theatre Royal Drury Lane, Catherine Street. The Looney Restaurant, Aldwych Drury Lane. RAF Church, St Clement's Dane Church, Strand. The Bellarina Restaurant, Bow Street. India High Commission, Aldwych. Duchess Theatre, Catherine Street. Savoy Theatre, Savoy Court. Strand Palace Hotel, Strand and Exeter Street. Scottish Church, WC2, Russell Street. Orchard Theatre, Russell Street. Rosewood Hotel, High Holborn. Africa House, Kingsway. Freemasons Hall, Great Queen Street. Royal College of Surgeons, Lincoln's Inn Fields. Clements Inn, Strand. Bush House, that is on the Aldwych. London School of Economics and Political Science, Houghton Street. Australia High Commission, Strand. Royal Opera House, Bow Street. HQS Wellington, Victoria Embankment. Insti Institution of Engineering and Technology, that is on uh, Savoy, Savoy Place. St John Sonus Museum, Lincoln's Inn Fields. Lyceum Theatre, Wellington Street. Queen's Chapel of Savoy, Savoy Hill. Seven Stars Public House. It's a Chancery Lane somewhere, so I can't see it. No, it's Kerry Street. Oh, okay, Kerry Street. Edgar Wallace Public House, At Essex Street. Red Rooms, Great Queen Street. Bouncer Restaurant, Russell Street. Royal Courts of Justice, Strand. Twining's Tea Shop, the oldest tea shop in London, Strand. Holborn Station, Kingsway. Hilton Waldorf, Aldwych. Strand Continental Hotel, Strand. Somerset House, Strand. Peacock Theatre, Portugal Street. Christopher's Restaurant, Wellington Street. London Transport Museum, Covent Garden, the Piazza, set by Russell Street. Let me London Hotel, Aldwych and Strand. Cole House Public House, Strand. Temple Station, Temple Place. King's College WC2, Strand. No Novello Theatre, Aldwych. Pregnant Man Public House, Chancery Lane. Kingsway Hall Hotel. No, I don't know. That's Great Queen Street. British American Tobacco. Temple Place. Aldwych Theatre. Aldwych Theatre's on the Aldwych. Yen Restaurant. Rundle Street. Roman Bath. Surrey Street, Strand Lane. Once this standard is achieved, 
then this new block of points becomes added to your ongoing growing list of pointed and revised points. So your daily routine will now need to include an amount of time set aside for regular point revision. It's important to always revise the latest points you have visited first. So use the week revision button to revise the complete seven days of pointing you have just done. And use the month revision button to revise all points from the last 30 days. This is outside of any time required to revise your new daily intake of points. And finally, what's fantastic about the app is it will automatically separate your points into daily random groups for seven days of the week. This is giving you a good even spread of revision to do each day. You should end up with around three to 400 points per day to revise, two to 3,000 plus points in total. The three major mistakes made whilst pointing are the taking of notes, the use of a map, and the volume of revision. Let's cover these one by one. Firstly, taking notes. In the out and about on your bike section of this video, you may have seen two notes that I added. I did this to show you a couple of examples of the kind of note you may want to take if you're going to take any at all. And here's the crux of the issue. I would take little to no notes at all. Understand one key thing about taking notes. Taking a note is not a memory technique. In actual fact, it is the complete postponement of a memory technique. We have far less success remembering something that is written down than you would if you just tried to repeat what you wanted to remember several times. The best way to remember the unique features to any point is by having practical examples of the specific thing you are trying to achieve with setting or leaving that particular point. These practical examples are coming at you thick and fast every day by the means of the daily point sheet. The practicing of point to point is by far the most efficient way to know and learn detail attached to any particular point. Knowing why you need something, knowing an examiner is actually asking something that raised the question for you will make you seek those specific answers. That will cause your inquisitive side to investigate, understand, learn and remember how to leave or set any specific point because you are now fully aware of its purpose. And unlike the extremely inefficient method of compiling note after note of information with no regard to its popularity, by attacking these issues from the point sheet, you know you are addressing something that is needed and is needed now. Let's look at some examples of how pointless your notes can be. Using the points in this video as examples, let's start with HQS Wellington. Now you're gonna hear people tell you, you need to make a note of leave on the left only or first left and right in both directions and a turnaround if you think it needs one, all of which is a complete and utter waste of time and mental energy. Moreover, it is extremely detrimental to the actual learning and remembering of this or any other point. Let's address the first question. You are about to take a note and you need to decide, is the point leave on left only? Looking at this video and looking at the images, what do you think? Is it leave on the left only or is it leave on right possible? The point I'm trying to make here is very often you as a beginner are not qualified to judge if it is leave on left only or not. In this instance, with the double white line in the center reservation, did you conclude it's leave on left only? And if that was what you decided, based on the video and the images, you would be wrong. You can leave this point on the right. So if you had taken a note, not only would it have been a waste of time anyway, it would have also been false information. So why are you taking notes when you don't even know the answer? The next issue regarding first left and rights from both directions. This is even more of a waste of time as you will not be able to write down any note that doesn't already exist in a far clearer format than you could express with words. First of all, you have the radius map itself showing you the first left and rights. Second, you have Google Street to view any time to check your first left or right. Any other query regarding any specific point. And finally, why are you writing down information with absolutely no awareness of whether it's required for any specific question? You may feel that you should take notes on all this information in case they ask it. The problem with that is this. There are already too many questions being asked 
every day that you can't find the time to practice? These questions are being asked, not maybe, not could be, but they are being asked. So why are you learning maybes when there is already questions that are absolutely being asked? Recently, Radio Rooftop Bar was being asked and the specific question it raised was, can you access the front door of Radio Rooftop Bar if you were coming from Catherine Street? Would you need to go all the way around Aldrich and back around the Strand to get to it? Now I don't take notes, so I need to research to find the answer. And the research is the key, because I now know, one, the question is being asked, two, I know exactly why I need the answer, three, I will practice the question with my point to point, which will emphasize the answer and aid memory. Practice in point to point, which I will cover in a future video, but briefly touch upon some aspects in this video in a later chapter, is the utilization of leaving and setting. That's what point to point is. The opportunity to practice the leaving and setting of a genuinely asked scenario. It is the real life scenario of an asked question. If you successfully know how to leave and set any question, then any note would have been a waste of time because the information was absorbed and remembered naturally with minimal effort. If you find that you're short on information and need to know a first left for a specific question, for example, just go to Google Street and check. When you do it this way, you know exactly why you are looking and investigating this particular piece of information. Whenever you seek information, knowing its purpose and its use, it is far more retainable as a memory. The collection of written notes with no awareness or understanding of if it will be needed is the collection of clutter. So here are the nutshell issues. Do you know if the note you took will be required? Are you writing notes for something that your A to Z or Google Street will show better? Are your notes reducing the amount of points you collect each day? Are your notes detracting from revising to develop a reflex answer? Notes do not help with remembering. They are a tool that remembers things for you for the sole purpose of allowing you not to remember it. Let's look at two real life practical examples of writing over remembering. Bear in mind your job in this regard is to remember. If I ask you to write down a phone number, what do you think your chances are of remembering it just from writing? Now imagine you do not have a pen and paper. You now know you must remember it. You engage your brain, you repeat the number until you feel comfortable that you have made the link. Notes prevent the development of that link. The same applies with shopping lists. There's a very simple memory technique for shopping lists. First, tell the person what it is you need to buy then count how many items you have mentioned. Very often just knowing you need 10 items is enough to trigger the memory of all 10 items as you put them in your basket. When you've placed seven items, you will know you still have three objects left to buy. You will search your memory for what you think the remaining items are, and in most instances, you will be able to remember. So take minimal to no notes. Trust yourself to remember, because in the case of points, it's better to remember seven and forget three than it is to have not tried to remember anything by writing all 10 down and placing them in your pocket. The second issue I mentioned was the map. As you may have seen in our previous videos, using a map has a very specific technique. When you're driving from one point to the next, it's important that you think your way to the next point. Obviously, if you have no idea or feel lost, then you get the map book out and you check it. But if you're able to go from one point to the next using your so far acquired knowledge, then that's fantastic. That's you actually expressing real life knowledge. You are practicing constantly and engaging your internal navigation skills that are growing all the time. Carry the map with you and use it to answer questions or find your way. Don't let it just tell you the answers to things that you may have been able to solve in your head. Finally, revision. Look at your schedule and allocate an hour a day to point revision. Points will go into your long-term memory. This means once revised correctly, they will need minimal to no revision at all. Many students waste an abundance of valuable study time revising points that are already fully remembered. 
So try to avoid revising long lists of points that are of the caliber of Euston Station, Buckingham Palace, BBC Rehearsal Studios and others. These will amount to hundreds of points which in itself will amount to lots of wasted minutes in revision if you continue to revise points that have made it into your long-term memory already. Your focus should be points that have been newly acquired and sticky points. Points that cause your brain to freeze because you have yet to develop a reflex answer for them. Never overlook the importance of the sticky list. These are your weak points and are far more valuable to revise than your general list of points. If you'd like a lesson with me one-to-one -one or in a group of four, these can all be booked on the events page of the WISM website. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed our content and if so, make sure to check out the other videos on the WISM YouTube channel and be sure to subscribe so that you can keep up to date with any new video releases we may do. If you've got any questions or queries, please put them in the comments below. I'll make sure that I answer them and everybody can see. From all at Wizan, we wish you the best of luck.